new video, new day. We have the bounty in from the episode 4. I hope you watched it. I have removed all four corners brakes and now we are going to refurbish them, to clean them and to paint them hopefully. But first of all, I wanted to see just how just how much okay I wanted to see just how much it weighs 5.8 kilos 5.8 kilos that's the weight 5.8 kilos that's how much the stock brake caliper and the brake caliper carrier without oil and without the brake pads weigh on Audi TT Mark III if you have standard brakes. Okay, so the idea with today's video is going to be to use a steel wire brush, sandpaper, any other tools that I might need. I'm going to remove this um, cap as well try to drain any more oil if there's any left and then just clean it as best as i can i am not going to remove the calipers because i think they are good and i don't want to change them but everything other than that is going to be changed cleaned and yeah we'll go from there so i hope you'll enjoy watching all of this in the time lapse because I don't want to make this way too long and I'm going to pause for anything that is um, important and and yeah, I hope we'll make it to the painting really soon, so stay tuned! This thing is made out of steel, which means it had so much more rust than a typical aluminium part. And it weighs a ton, so it's hard to work with. But just like the aluminium part, it also has this seam as the piece has been um, molded out of two parts or more molding parts. So this is what I want to remove. This seam, I just made it ob more obvious with an Dremel tool and I'm going to sand it down probably with an angle grinder because it is much harder than aluminium. And then we are going to go um, yeah, move on with a Dremel tool and steel, wash, uh, steel wire brush. And I want to pull this thing out anyways because I want to save this rubber from being damaged and there, uh, I want to clean it out from the inside since there are some debris that fell in. So we now have to remove the, the piston. And I tried it with, to, with, um, to push it down with a wooden brush. But I think the next step would be to put the screw in here where the oil line usually goes in. And then just push the cylinder out on the other side. So this is the plan for now. So going on to the angle grinder real quick to, to grind off all of those pieces and then moving on with the finer tools. So yeah, let's go.
you saw me battle this thing and it is 10 times harder to get the corrosion off of steel than it is of aluminium. That is why I am only semi happy with the results. It does look okay. I would however like it to be more like this before we can paint it. But I am really impatient to see just how um, this is going to turn out. So I am going to paint this one right now. And um, I'm going to probably take the others either to sandblasting or I'm going to do it myself. We'll see, but they are going to be handled in the same manner as this one. Oh, is this now? Yes. I also cleaned up the O-rings and the boot, the cylinder. I also cleaned the cylinder, especially the groove where the, the boot sits in. And I'm going to spray, spray paint the inside of the cylinder because it was a bit rusty. And there are some pitting of the rust on this lip, but nothing major. So this cylinder is, the inside of it is really good. So we are going to reuse it. I used this benzene. <laughs> That's what it's called really. Um, so it's a petrol, kind of a petrol to clean everything off. So there is nothing. There we go. I use this wash benzene, so it's a kind of a petrol to make sure there is no grease or anything on the part and then now we are going to start mixing up the paint and before that of course masking everything up and then we are going to do the first coat of the paint. I washed this thing already but I'm going to make sure this is bone dry before we can reinstall it. There are no visible cracks or anything so this rubber is actually really good we are going to be reusing that as well as this little piece but that will come right after we clean those holes those two ones this one i still need to clean them and of course the inside of the caliper itself but for now we are going to mask everything up and uh, try our paint to quickly show you one more time because I am really surprised just how professional this looks look at this masking job everything is so precise and what you do is of course take a masking tape make sure that it's on and then use a whatever round surface you have so I have a screwdriver and I just go around the corners like this couple of times with medium pressure and then until uh, like this I don't care if you can see that until it is off amazing isn't it so we have everything that we need for painting this thing we have a cup we have a measuring scale and we have a small brush. I like to use these brushes because they are really um, precise. Something to mix with. We have a two component paint and this is the harder hardener. It is mixed two, no sorry, five to one. So five of the Right, five of the five of the paints to paint towards one to one of the so it is mixed five units of the paint and one unit of the hardener. So I'm going to whoa. I have not revealed the paint yet. 
Can you see it? It is a lovely yellow. I was thinking black wheels and this should work very well together. Now you know the color of the wheel as well. All right, so how do I do this? How do I make as little mess as possible? Five units. How do I get five units? I am definitely making a mess, but it is what it is, right? Yay! Sixty-eight, sixty-eight grams is what we are looking for on our scale in order to have five to one ratio. Okay, I should have definitely worn gloves for this. What did I say? Sixty-eight, right? Let's see. Three, four, five. And it turned off, yeah, 60, 68, okay, we are there, that was complicated, overly complicated, mix the paint thoroughly, just quickly put this somewhere better in the frame, make myself comfortable, mix this thing thoroughly, with a hardener yeah, this is the first layer done i'm going to let it dry out for a bit and then do a second layer on this side then we are going to flip it over once everything is dry on this side um not only does it look good does it um, it's now a different color, the color that I want it to be, but also the caliper is now protected from the rust and the elements and it should last much longer. But I also spray painted the inside of the cylinder with a aluminum zinc paint or zinc paint. So yeah, that's not much, but it is now protected as well and it won't rust as well. Also, I masked out the outer side of the cylinder which goes into the caliper so it doesn't get sprayed on. Now, made a small pause. Now that it is almost sticky and tacky but nothing, none of the paint stays on your finger. This is the perfect moment to apply the second layer and this one should be enough. I might need a third one but we'll see once we get the second one finished. The paint is finally at least dry to the touch. Nothing sticking, it's nice and smooth. In my opinion, looks really, really nice. I've already removed this plug, cleaned the inside of the hole, of more rust and now there are a couple of things where I've made a mistake but we are going to be painting this side now so I'm going to be able to do this parts much better and then the whole caliper is going to be painted and it's going to look amazing I mean it really looks amazing right now but it will look even better and I really do have to be careful because the paint is dry, but it's probably not hardened all the way. So I'm going to have to use something soft on the, on the table before we put this thing back like this, just to prevent anything happening to the paint now. So yeah, same procedure. This time I have a syringe to measure the paint, so it's going to be a bit less messy. A new brush you really need a lot of those brushes so I'm going to have to go and buy some more. Mm -hmm. 
And other than that, standard pr procedure just like last time. how hard it is to refurbish these calipers I am going to tell you right now very hard whatever you do do not turn this screw in order to get the caliper out I did it and it was a crucial mistake because all of a sudden I had a bunch of small small ball bearings going all over the place and it took me better half of two days to get everything back as it was anyways this time we are just going to go ahead and do it the right way so remove everything there's going to be plenty of oil in so I think I am going to drain the caliper first 11 mil to get this thing started let's see love tap there you go i'm really glad they weren't rusted so this is what i am going to do i'm going to drain all of the fluids all right i got the screw the bleeder valve out i'm still waiting on stainless steel breeder valves to come this is why this thing isn't done isn't finished because i'm waiting on that one part and then once we have that i'm going to be able to finish filming that okay sip of coffee moving on so now I just want to make sure all of the oil is out and believe it or not we need to push this thing inside and most the easiest way for me was to use a hammer and just gently tap it out you might however consider using a vise just put the vise in here and on the other side i'm going to do it this is what you want to be this is what you want to see because this is not a c-clip it is a pinch clip or however you call it because there is no groove for groove for it in the shaft it doesn't lock it just you know sits like that now what we need to do this is a really tricky part because there is a steel o-ring inside of this rubber boot so it's really hard not to bend bend it okay i think i think i got it let's try to remove the boot come on booty all right there we go also filled with disgusting disgusting old oil and everything whatnot and this was really overdue for a overhaul nice okay and what do we have left is the cylinder itself which still doesn't want to come out let's see if we can push it with a screw yes we can all right <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, some more paper towel. You are going to need quite a lot of paper towels to make sure everything stays clean while you work. But yeah, other than that, if you don't make the same mistake I did and unscrew the cylinder out of itself, it's a relatively easy job. Still no, still a no-go. Can we give it a small tap? Ouch. It should be out by now, really. It should really be, oh, it's coming. It's coming, it's really hard to pull something when not all of the surfaces are nice and oily. Ah, there we go. Pinched my, pinched my finger. All right. Be very careful. This is the mechanism that houses the bowls and some springs and whatnot. So if you get that out, it is a nice afternoon of putting it back in. So the best case scenario for everyone is just leave this as one piece and don't look at it the wrong way because if you do I can guarantee you you are going to regret it leave it like that there is also a o-ring inside of the piston which of course is the most important one as it is there to make sure that none of the oil goes out of the cylinder so also needs to be cleaned or changed there we go there it is over here and there is a washer all the way down there we go oh I almost forgot there is also a, another one of those o-rings in the housing on this side of course on the in, inner side of thing I'm just going to leave it in there for now. Try to get the inside of the barrel as dry as possible so we don't have brake fluid all over the place. All right. Okay, that's that's enough. That's good enough for now. That is good enough for now. was just a quick clean of the surfaces that I'm probably not going to be able to get differently that's why we use Dremel small Dremel tool this is now ready for a this is now ready for either a sandblasting or using a wire wheel on an angle grinder we'll see which one is it's going to be I hope sandblasting is going to do quite good of a job 
that would be great because the amount of dirt, rust and everything that's baked in it's incredible. You can see like a couple of mil worth of, of grime and everything. All right, so this these things are going to be cleaned and packed away until this thing is clean and painted and dry and everything. Also, we are waiting on a set of stainless steel breather valves. So when they come, we are going to be able to finish restoring all of the brakes. In the meantime, I would like to clean this as good as possible. And now I'm going to be consistent with my advices. Like I said, organization is the key, left hand side in a separate bag and goes into the container. are finally here it took incredibly longer than expected this is the right hand side to paint and grind off all four of the brakes make sure that everything is nice and as good as new and that we don't have any rust or debris or whatever not clean out all of the threads clean out all of the edges and everything paint two layers on both sides but yeah we are here now so i've cleaned out the interior of the barrels as well hopefully as good as it gets now to stay professional as we did throughout the process of replacing and rebuilding the brakes. We have labeled bags for everything, right hand side rear. This thing will stay off for some time now. 
Okay, let's, let's see everything that we have that we need to install. This is the one that we rebuilt, I think. Second one, oh no, this is the one. I still haven't received the bleeder valves, so they have had to send them again. Nevertheless, we will have to wait a couple days more before they are here, but hopefully they will be here soon. We are going to loop everything up, so let me just make sure I know what goes in first, and I think this is the part that goes in first. The ceiling O-ring, of course it got twisted, there we go, nice, and in. All right, one more thing. I'm going to grab a brush in order to be able to apply lubricant and make sure to make sure to prepare yourself when filming stuff so screws don't fall out all over the place. All right. Sure, there's no. Oh no 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 no! I did that one. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, we can do that. We can definitely do that. Right. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You don't want to unscrew this, however. That is one thing you don't want to do. Now, is this now all the way in? Yes, that's all the way in. Get it out because I am going to lube everything once again. And for that, of course, ATE original paste that goes in side. I don't know whether it's a silicone paste, a lithium paste, whatever not paste, but just to make sure everything is looped up properly okay like that and then once again for yeah i should probably do whole silly whole cylinder walls however we want to do this as well Make sure everything is nice and greasy, even though all of this is going to be flooded with brake fluid. It's never a bad idea because those are bearings. Sorry, I'm doing most of the work out of the frame. I just want to make sure I put everything back together nicely so like that and then what do we have left right like this okay top of that is already looped up right so put a generous amount on your finger and then go all around the cylinder walls Otherwise, there is no chance for us to to slide the cylinder back in. It has to be lubed. And even with, with it being lubed, it's not going to be super easy. This is why I have prepared most of this. Yeah, we are reusing the rubber because it's okay. It's just slightly bent out of shape. Or is it? No, it's not actually. Okay. Let me see. I think, I think we are going to 
upside down. No. Please do excuse, I am doing this for the first time. So I might run into same troubles that you guys are going to or possibly already ran into. Seems twisted. Seems to twisted. The question is, is it going to untwist itself? Or do we have to, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just do that. Yay, there we go. There we go, now we can pull this thing all the way. That's it. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, first step is done properly. Let's see. Oh, it goes in really nicely. There we go. Okay. Okay, uh huh, there is a bit of residual something, something dirt, nothing too bad. And then just make sure that the front lip, the front rubber is seated properly. I am going to use something that's not sharp but still has a structural integrity. No, something a bit stronger. No, I hope I won't, be, I won't have to take this thing off, just put it back on. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Doesn't look promising actually, to be quite honest. There is still a gap. Oh, no there isn't. Okay, I have managed to, oh, no, no, to sit it in same place properly. Okay, okay. That being said, no, it's not. No, it's not all the way in. Okay, let's see what we can do about that. Have to be really careful not to damage. Oh, now it's seated. Now you're seated, okay. Now it's seated all the way all around. So the cylinder is now in. Next thing we needed to do, it was either 14.5, no, it was 18.5 millimeters. Yes, that is exactly what we were looking for. So we now know the whole thing is in its place and huh how uh, huh aha i have an idea i just need a to put this thing like this and then i need a socket or maybe i don't i'm just going to use two flat caps and my my leg just to make sure that this doesn't slip and then just going to slowly no no socket it is socket it is going to be perfect
so it's going to be a socket and a small hammer and let's see if that's going to I think that is going to work. You see, we made it. It's where it's supposed to be. Let me just check one more time. If we are at 18.5 millimeters, We are exactly at 18.5 millimeters, which means that this is a great tip. So in my case, 13 millimeter socket and gen gently tap it out, but you need to hold the counter hold on the cylinder itself or the piston, sorry, the piston. Now let's make sure that it's nice and clean. Okay. Clean, clean, clean. That's the major thing here. And now, let me think. Let me think. This is the next step. Okay, I'm going to quickly clean it off because it was full of some kind of grease and then I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this one a lithium I think this is a lithium grease it has to say somewhere over here okay I don't know what this is make sure that it's nice and lubricated just like the ring that we just tapped onto and then yeah Ooh, this is going to be aha no 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 there is no questioning it's this way around yes it bit so this is where it bites Oh, now I'm lacking the two screws, so please do excuse until I find the screw. There we go, there we are. Okay, okay, make sure that I have forgotten to remove one of the plugs. Silly me. Okay, no problem. Oh, this one just broke, I just broke it off. That's why it's not completely out. Doesn't matter. Now it is. There we go. Now it is properly out. Screws are of course cleaned and ready to be installed. Do I have a proper bit for this? I don't. Oh yeah, yeah, I do actually. Let me just quickly go and grab it's a allen bit with is it a five yes it's an allen five bit so let me just there we go yes this is an ikea screwdriver and it's a wonderful tool so please do not make fun of me for using it 
it's it has been a lifesaver so many times. All right. And it works wonders. In case you are wondering, it works great. Okay, just as far as it goes. We don't need it any better. Okay, one step closer. So the electronic parking brake is now set in place. I am going to go ahead and I am going to put some silicone on the ends of these bolts so no water can come in ever again. So yes, next thing, even though uh, maybe you shouldn't, yeah, you should actually grease it well, with not so much grease actually. The interior walls of this space so the rubber grommets can go in much easier. All right, and so if this grease stays in here, it's not going to allow the inner walls to rust because they are not painted. There we go. There we go. And then we just need to make sure this is the right way in. How do you push these things through? That is going to be the question of the day today. And the answer of the day is quite frankly easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, wipe off the residue of the grease. And then make sure your working environment is clean. For now, I'm going to put these caps on just so a couple of things less to worry about, not to get uh, lost. And then same thing on the other side, just start it and then just use a small flathead to push the lip of this grommet through and then just slide it in, turn it a couple of turns to make sure that it sits in place and then clean everything up once again, make sure the second cap is on. I think we are done. No, nope, pause, break, 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 break. I forgot to put this thing on. Uh, yeah, obviously you're watching real time, live, everything, nothing is staged or anything. So yeah, I did forget to put a o-ring back but it's fine so it's just two screws there we go remove this thing this is where the o-ring goes I am going to slightly lube up the area where it sits all right so this gro groove that's the right name, nice. Then we are going to put the o-ring on. Yep, and now we can place the electronic parking brake motor in place. Now it is significantly harder 
to push it in place, but it's still okay. There we go. Always use the trick that I've showed you a couple of thousand times. Apply a slight pressure downwards and um, turn the screw counterclockwise until it clicks into its threads then you know that there is no chance that you cross thread the hole because the screw has found its original hole uh, original sorry original threads if that if that makes any sense and i've shown those that trick like a thousand times so far but it's never enough i guess now we are done those are the couple of things that are going to stay until installment. So this thing goes after the brake pads. This thing, these two screws will go into last. And this is the wheel speed sensor. And this is the cap for the breather valve, we are waiting on a breather valve to come, but this is the rear brake restoration complete as far as we can do it right now. Finally here, we finally have the package that I was waiting on for way too long. Those are the stainless steel breather valves for the brakes. And this is going to be one final touch for our brakes, for our brake restoration video. Those are also a bit shorter than the OEMs breather valves but they are going to work wonderful also because they are stainless, stainless steel we need a little bit of lubricant on the threads and they should go right in if not yeah they go in really nicely and taking that they are a bit shorter than the OEMs you're going to sit much nicer on the brake caliper. There you go. Just a little bit more. There you go. Bottomed out. And look at how nice this looks. Nice and shiny. Let's see. There we go. This is one finished brake caliper nice so i'm going to go ahead and do this on the rest of the brakes and with that we are done with the restoration of our brake system or at least the brake calipers thank you so much for watching if you'd like this video please make sure to subscribe like follow share with your friends whatever you like to do with this video um, until the next one see you